Today we have Doug, sorry if I butcher your last name, Doug, Hasenbein from the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation here to speak with us. Doug, I'll pass it over to you. All right. And Annalisa actually got it perfectly. And Annalisa, you, just to be sure you're hearing me okay? Yes, we are. All right. We're going to roll here. But uh, hey, good start. When someone pronounces my last name correctly, we are off to a good start. And that's just a reminder. Please mute your microphone if you're not muted. There we go. Hey, we will deal with these little technical snafus as they come up. But again, my name is Doug Hasenbein. I am with our formal name of our state agency, Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, better known as PennDOT. And we're going to be talking about general career options, just general things for you to keep in mind right now, especially with PennDOT, but even with some of the other state agencies. And to get right into it, when you think of PennDOT, there's obviously some normal things that will come to mind. Um, and when we're talking about PennDOT, certainly I think what comes to mind is the normal road construction and the highway maintenance. And then what most of you are going through right now in terms of a driver's license. Either you're about to get that permit, maybe it's about a year or two away, maybe you're in that permit process, or maybe you have your license. So these are some of the normal things that always come to mind when you think of PennDOT. And certainly some of the other normal facts and statistics, you know we maintain the roadways. We're actually the fifth largest state-owned roadway system in the country. We have a lot of miles of uh, highways and bridges that we maintain. And then look what we do in terms of the driver's license and the driver's registrations. So this is all the normal stuff you probably think about with PennDOT. And of course, this translate into, translates into jobs. We have a lot of employees, nearly 10,000 employees, um, who focus on most of this work that you're seeing right here on the screen, whether it's dealing with the highways or the driver's uh, licenses and the driver's registrations. And of course, the other big thing that always comes to mind with PennDOT is the snow plowing. And we have a lot of positions that are seasonal in nature that basically we start hiring for in September, October, and they basically last through April or through the late spring, depending on whenever winter wants to ran, uh, uh, end. Um, this year we had very little in terms of a winter, but you know other years winter will hang on. So these are a lot of the normal positions that you think of when it comes to PennDOT. And then I like to remind employee or not employees, but individuals, whether it's students, whether it's adult job seekers, that there are a lot of other positions that you don't always think of with PennDOT. Um, like I said, we are a large state agency. We're basically the third largest state agency in Pennsylvania. So we have a lot of other things where we're looking to hire people and we're looking to employ people. Um, a lot of the privately run railroads, we must oversee them, making sure they're following the rules and regulations. All the airports from the big ones around Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, we have to oversee certain regulations. But then a lot of those small little uh, airports that basically every county has, those of you who go to the Bloomsburg Fair every year, you know when you're coming into town from that one direction, you see the airport there. And that's that picture there in the lower right corner. So all those airports and heliports, we have to make sure all the procedures, all the rules are being followed. We need employees for that. Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, they have ports and waterways that we're overseeing. And then you drive by them basically on a monthly basis, maybe more. But out in the interstates, you see all those welcome centers and those rest areas. Well, it's PennDOT who keeps up on the maintenance of all those. And ultimately, we need employees for all those functions. And then again, in terms of positions that don't always come to mind with PennDOT, but that we actually do hire for. This is just a very rough sampling to give you an idea of just how many career options there are with PennDOT alone. Now, some of these job titles that you're seeing here, they are used across the board in other state agencies, but other ones are almost exclusively used by PennDOT, specifically the cartography position that what that stands for is making maps. You could understand how, yes, PennDOT will be a state agency that makes and designs maps. Uh, we have certain specific biology and chemistry positions that are very specific to PennDOT. So again, we have a full variety of positions 
from the road plowing, from the highway maintenance, but from accounting and finance to administrative positions that are out there. Just some general things to, for you to keep in mind. And again, in terms of a workforce, PennDOT is the third largest state agency among all the state agencies in Pennsylvania. And the big chunk of our workforce, we try to use efficient, efficiently. Most of our employees are on the front line. They are out doing that highway maintenance work or they're in the driver's licensing centers to try to serve the public. And then look at that bottom bullet point there. This is what I was talking about. We have 430 job classifications that we use in PennDOT. Now, again, some of those are used in other state agencies, but some are uh, exclusive to PennDOT. So that's what I mean. We have a lot of different career options in PennDOT, and you could always get a sampling for those. You see our website there. It's listed in the lower left uh, corner there, and that's almost going to be on every screen. And I'm going to reference that website several times throughout this presentation, but that's a great way for you to kind of get in and drill down in our website to see what type of career options are out there. And for those of you who are underclassmen or if you're graduating, I can't stress enough get into that website, drill down, see what we have. So if you are an underclassman, you could kind of maybe explore some classes that might help you with certain career areas you're interested in. Those of you who are, who've just graduated or about to graduate, you're going to see that there's going to be links to the job application website. So that, that jobs website, a lot of good information on there to explore these job classifications. Now, um, breaking it down, one of the technical words you always hear in state government is a deputate. And basically deputate, this is the sections PennDOT is broken into. And the biggest deputate we have, it's what we call highway administration. And that's all the road crews, basically what you're typically thinking about PennDOT. The crews that are doing the highway construction, the highway maintenance, the snow plowing. And by far, most of the PennDOT workforce is in highway administration. The other biggie is the other uh, deputate listed up there at the top, driver and vehicle services. We want to make sure you're getting your permit. We want to make sure you're getting your driver's license uh, approved as quickly as possible and your vehicle registration. And then at the bottom are some of the other areas that are still a vital part to PennDOT. And administration, that's all the behind the scenes stuff. That's where we support the employees. Multimodal, that's some of the newer technologies um, with the self-driven cars. That's going to be a growing area. We're doing a lot of that testing and training out in the Pittsburgh area, but also with the ports and waterways, that's going to fall under the multimodal can, uh, um, area. Now, just to give you a sampling of how you can move around in not only in PennDOT, but in state government from other agencies, um, people always want to know about my uh, background with state government, and this gives a good um, I think idea of how you can move around and explore different career options within Pennsylvania state government. Uh, I've been working for state government now for about nearly 19 years. July will be my uh, 19th anniversary with the state, which I can't believe. And I started with state government right out of college, um, right after graduating from Shippensburg University. And I went to Shippensburg University for communications journalism. Uh, my original game plan was to be a news anchor or a reporter or perhaps a weather caster. And, you know, th that kind of explains the minor there. When people first see a minor in earth science, they're saying, I don't get it. That's an odd combination. But remember, I wanted to possibly do weather at a TV station. And Shippensburg did not have a meteorology program. But in the earth science program, there were a number of meteorology courses so this is how I got some um, exposure, and I thought this could help me enhance my opportunities to get in with the station. I could be both a reporter and perhaps do uh, uh, weather on the weekend, serve as the, the weekend weather caster. So throughout my time at Shippensburg, I worked part-time at a number of stations. And I can't stress this enough. When you're going on to any type of schooling after high school, take advantage of internships, take advantage of part-time jobs, especially if you could find a part-time job that relates to your major. You're going to build your skills. It might even open some doors for full-time employment. But sometimes what happens after you're going through college or any type of post-high school education, you kind of determine, maybe I want to go in a different direction. And, and that's what happened to me. Um, when you're in, you're pursuing a broadcast position, broadcast stations, they work 24-7. 
uh, you work holidays. So there's never a, a state holiday for a radio or TV station. So by the end of college, I decided, I think I want to go in a different direction. And I didn't know much about state government, but I thought I have the earth science uh, minor. Let me go to the DEP website, the Department of Environmental Protection. And I went on there. It sent me over to the general uh, website where you could see all the postings and openings for all the state agencies. And I really actually did not qualify for anything with my earth science background, but there was something else that I learned of. There was a general position, a trainee position called the human resources management trainee position. And you basically qualified if you had a bachelor's degree. And this ended up being and obviously, I applied for that human resources management trainee position. I was ultimately hired for it. Well, it ended up being a fifth year of college for me, essentially. So here's one thing to, to really keep in the back of your mind. I cannot stress the importance enough if you're looking either with the state at our state government website or you're looking with another employer. If you see a training position, especially as you're coming out of high school or any type of post high school education, give serious consideration to any type of training position, especially if you qualify for it, if it relates to your schooling, or if you're interested in it. Because not only are you going to learn some of the nuts and bolts of that particular area, you're going to learn about that employer in general. Uh, in my case, just for example, um, I did not have any HR experience from college, but this ended up being a full year of training in human resources, but I also got exposed to state government. We learned just about some general state government topics. I ended up rotating through four different state agencies. So to this day, I will say that this trainee position has been invaluable, invaluable to me. I was able in my 19 year, near 19 years now to move around through several state agencies. I really know how the, all the different agencies work and how to move around. So keep this in the back of your mind as you eventually start looking for positions. And you will see these training positions out there. I think based on personal experience, they are invalu invaluable. And you're going to see that after my training year, I moved into an HR analyst position and I moved out of the Harrisburg area. I moved out in the field. And I had a split assignment in Berks and Luzerne County. And at the developmental disability centers there, they are 24 seven operations. So this in a sense related to my experience working at the different radio and TV stations. I still had that 24 seven feel, meaning things are never gonna shut down. We're never gonna have a snow day. We're never gonna have a holiday off. And when I'm working in human resources, what that meant, I'm certainly doing hiring. Sometimes in human resources, you're doing firing, you're also doing discipline, you're helping explain benefits, you're helping people with accommodations on the job if they need some special accommodations. So I ended up doing that for four years and I really enjoyed it, but then I was ready for a change. And this is the nice thing with state government. Um, you can move around to different agencies. So by 2006, I moved back to Harrisburg for my employment, and I actually went to the public school employees retirement system. And boy, is this position valid for right now. Um, my formal job title was management analyst, but what I needed to do was make sure the disaster plans were in place for the agency. And you know what? One of the big things we always worked on was for a pandemic. And I'm not going to kid you, I used to think when we would go through our test exercises and our preparations and all our documentation, make sure we were ready for a pandemic, I thought to myself, this will never happen. Well, you know what's going on right now. So you see all the different experiences you can have in state government. I did that position for two years, and then I followed another uh, personal interest that I had. I always liked uh, following investments. I like doing some investing, investing on my own. So an opening came up in the Pennsylvania Department of Banking and Securities in the investor education section. And uh, this is another experience that I could relate to you. When I moved into the investor education position as an investment and in, as an information writer, I actually had to take a voluntary demotion. Now, that is not something for everyone. It's a personal decision. But sometimes to follow an interest or to get into a new area, sometimes that's a consideration you might want to give some thought to. You certainly want to look at your personal budget, see is this something you can afford. 
Is it something you can do? And like I said, it's a personal decision. And I thought, if this is the way for me to get into personal finance and personal investing, this is something I'm going to have to do. Obviously, I did it. And then, as you can see there on the screen, I worked my way up, um, back up to, in terms of getting a, a raise, and I worked my ba way back up through the administrative officer position. So that's one of the nice opportunities with state government. Sometimes you take a voluntary demotion, it's actually going to open the doors for future pay increases, and it's going to give you more experience. So again, sometimes you zig and zag, but in the long run, it's going to help you move up higher. I ended up doing investor education for eight and a half years, and apparently I didn't less learn my lesson the first time around, because then, based on what I was doing in investor education, I wanted to get into our securities licensing area. And when we talk about securities licensing, that's making sure all the stockbrokers who are going to help you invest and buy stocks for you, we, or meaning the Department of Banking and Securities, has to make sure those individuals are properly licensed. Well, again, as you saw from my career uh, uh, experience at Shippensburg University, I did not have an accounting or finance background. So for me to get my foot in the door in securities licensing, I had to move into an administrative assistant position. Once again, that meant a voluntary demotion, but that's how I was able to get into that area. And I did that position for two years. And then I decided it was time for a total change. And I will just say here, all rules apply for this next employer. I moved over to the Liquor Control Board, all right? I did not ever do any sampling on a job, but I served as a product and supply analyst. And I think you all know when we're talking about product with Liquor Control Board, what we're talking about. But this ended up being a really interesting position at the Liquor Control Board because I had to make sure our product got from the distribution centers to the stores. It's a very fast paced environment. Um, there's a lot of questions that come in from the stores. They need this product, they need that product. And certainly during the pandemic, things got a very interesting. So it's only there a short time um, because this interest in, in PennDOT came up. I was able to have a chance to get back into human resources. So you see how I've moved around in state government. I started in human resources, I got out of human resources for a while, and now I'm back in working on student outreach. So what I did here, you see how you can move around to different state agencies, but also back to my other point, you see how big PennDOT is as a state agency. There are a lot of employees in PennDOT, they've moved around within PennDOT to a variety of different positions, but the whole time they've stayed in PennDOT, so you can see all the options that are there. And sometimes, yeah, you take a calculated risk with the pay cut and you do your homework. You see, can you find that? Or you explore other options and it really can open some doors there um, when you do your homework before you just jump into a risk blindly. I'm gonna take a little pause here just to shout out to Annalisa, just to see if we have any questions or if I could continue on. So Annalisa, any questions we might wanna address at the moment? I don't have any questions yet. Lindsay, Emily, do you have any? I didn't have anything come through on my end, at least not yet. Yep, same. I think we can continue. Okay, no problem. I just wanted to check in. We will continue on. Again, if there's any pressing questions that you have, certainly submit them or otherwise at the end we could address them. But again, that just gives you a little bit of a sampling how you can move around in state government. And there's a lot of unique ways to build on your career or um, change your, your, your area, but still be with the same employer. So that means your, your retirement plan is not gonna change. Your benefit plan is not gonna change. So a lot of unique options that are there for you. Um, after the presentation, Annalise is going to send a link out to you. It's a YouTube video. Um, we're not going to play it here because through the virtual platform, ver uh, videos usually don't play very cleanly. But after the presentation, Annalise is going to get the link out to you. And that's going to show you uh, a pretty interesting video on basically high school students, a number of high school students who took advantage of the different employment programs we offer to both high school and post high school students. Now, when I say po post high school, that refers to students going into a tra traditional four-year college or a community college or any type of technical or trade school, okay? And then the other thing to keep in mind with PennDOT, virtually all of our student-oriented positions and our internships, they are paid. And that's not the case everywhere. There are some cases where internships are unpaid, 
Now, why do I bring that up? When I did my internships as a communications journalism major, it is normal in communications journalism to not be paid for your internship. But any internship you're gonna do with PennDOT or the state government in general, you will also be receiving a paycheck for it. So that's a nice thing. The other thing that I want you to keep in mind when you take a look at that video link is that those students then basically they're setting up the door or the setting things up for themselves to get into either temporary work with PennDOT or another state agency or part-time employment. And eventually that's going to lead to full-time employment. So sometimes when you're starting out with state government, you may not find a full-time position, but I can't stress enough when it comes to state government, get your foot in the door because once you get your foot in the door, there's a lot of internal postings to move around. And you saw how I moved around. So even though you may not see, quote unquote, your dream job when you're first starting, pursue a general interest, and then you're going to see how there's other options that are out there. But be on that link from Annalisa afterwards. It, it's a pretty interesting video, and you're going to see how students took advantage of the different um, high school uh, opportunities we offer to students. All right. Now, in terms of the popular job classes, for those of you who maybe just graduated from high school or you're going to be graduating in about the next week or two, if you decided that, hey, I finished up with high school, I just want to enter the workforce. Well, these are the popular positions that you could get in essentially with a high school degree. Right off the top of the list there, the clerical position. These are a great way to get your foot in the door and to really learn uh, work with the state agency at the bottom rung of the ladder. And then with those clerical positions, I cannot tell you how many uh, uh, employees today, whether they're in PennDOT or they're in another state agency, they're in rather high level positions. And it's fascinating when you hear their career history with the state government, they started out in a clerical position. And what I really think is beneficial in that type of scenario, those employees who are in a high level position today, but started at a base level clerical position, they know how that state agency works inside and out because they started at the bottom rung of the employment ladder. They started from the smaller level positions and worked their way up. So when they're making positions now in their higher level position, they know how that's going to affect essentially every employee. They know the different work procedures and the different work functions that go on. So the state is one area where you could come in at the bottom rung and truly work your way up. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you spend just a year or two in a clerical position and you're moving up to an agency director. No, you're going to work your way up through various positions. And you saw how I moved around, whether you stay in one agency or you migrate through several agencies. But hopefully you're seeing that now, how you get your foot in the door with the state. And if you have an interest here or you have an interest there, you can move around and also move upward. Now, another area exclusive to PennDOT is the driver license examiner assistant position. Essentially, this is an entry level position. The only requirement is that you have one year of public contact work, but that's kind of a wide open requirement. So maybe if you did an internship or if you had a part time job and you were dealing with the public, you're likely going to qualify for that. And let's face it, driver's licensing is an essential part of Pennsylvania. Everyone who wants to drive a vehicle, they need a license. So just within our driver's licensing section in Pennsylvania, there are a lot of opportunities where you can move upward. There's employees who've been in our driver licensing section their whole career there. So in that clerical or driver's licensing area and customer service area, there's a lot of entry level positions where you could work your way up. Now, Maybe there's some of you on the presentation here, you're saying, ah, Doug, I don't really want a desk-oriented job, or I really don't want to be in an office all day. Well, keep your eye open when you go on to our uh, uh, PennDOT jobs website and you look at the openings, keep your eye opening for the technical assistant position. This position is not always posted continuously, but it usually comes up for a couple months out of the year. But the technical assistant position it's your entry level entry into the highway maintenance position and the road crew positions. And it's not just a way to start doing work. We use this technical assistant as a training position. So if you want to start working your way up in those highway maintenance positions, this is a great way to get your foot in the door in those highway maintenance positions. 
Again, the technical assistant position just requires that you essentially have a high school degree. Again, when that's posted, you apply for it. And then once you get hired, you're going to get some training. You're going to learn the different areas of highway maintenance, the road construction, the snow removal, the highway equipment maintenance. And that's going to allow you to get more experience to work your way up into higher level positions. But you're going to be out there in those highway maintenance organizations. So, no, you're not going to be behind a desk. You're not going to be in the office. You're going to be out in the field. You're going to be doing repairs and equipment. You might be out doing repairs on a guardrail or doing some uh, road work. So that's going to be that line of work if you don't want to be in an office-oriented position. Those of you on the presentation, maybe you're considering or maybe you're already pursuing your CDL. There's a great way to get your foot in the door with the CDL. It's the transportation equipment operator trainee position. Now, the one requirement you do need with that position is your Class C driver's license. But that's basically what we all have. If you're going after your uh, um, regular driver's license, that's your Class C. Everyone's going to need that. And then as long as you just have your CDL permit, you don't need the actual CDL driver's license itself. You just need the CDL permit. You're going to qualify for that transportation equipment operator trainee position. From there, in a lot of cases, we're going to work with you to give you that additional training to help you pass the CDL test. And then that's going to permit you to drive a snowplow, to operate our other heavy duty equipment. And that's going to open the doors to future uh, positions, to higher level positions. And then also in the trades front, we have the tradesman helper position. So again, those of you on the presentation here, if you did just graduate or you're about to graduate in the next couple of weeks and you're just ready to enter the workforce, these are some positions to be on the lookout for. They're not continuously open, but they pop open enough on our uh, the job posting website. So be on the lookout for these job titles. There are some very good opportunities here. Again, just some of the popular classes, whether they just require a high school degree or some more specialized training. Obviously, with PennDOT, we are maintaining a lot of roadways, which we already discussed. So in short, we are always, always, always looking to fill engineering positions. OK, so those of you who are considering um, your job options, maybe you're an underclassman yet, maybe just, you know, next year is going to be your senior year, or your junior year, what have you. Consider an engineering position if you're not sure what you want to do. Yes, that's going to involve some science and math positions, but there is going to be job security there. And let's just talk about the current situation right now with the pandemic. Yes, there was a general shutdown across the board, but where was the one area everyone was looking to go to the supermarket now what needed to get to the supermarket well certainly the customers but also those tractor trailers for the deliveries and what allows the customers and the tractor trailers to get from point a to b the highway system so whether we're in a pandemic or another agency or another uh, uh, emergency situation we need the roadways to be intact so you can see how vital a lot of the careers um, that PennDOT offers just are to the general public, all right? So engineering, those positions are typically going to uh, require a two or four year degree before you could apply, but the trades positions as well, they're going to evolve some type of schooling, either through VOTEC, maybe some additional schooling after high school and VOTEC, but these are the very popular job classes that we're basically always looking to fill on a regular basis at PennDOT, all right? Now, some other things for you to consider as you continue through either your high school uh, career or your post high school career. We're going to walk through several of these areas. And uh, one thing we offer, which is a really nice, quick way to look at a career area in PennDOT, is through a job shadow. Now, remember just a few minutes ago, I referenced how we use a lot of engineers. We're always looking to fill engineers, whether it be in the Harrisburg area or almost uh, any of the counties throughout the state. Um, maybe you're you know, going into your sophomore year or your junior year um, in high school, and you're not sure whether you want to do engineering because, yeah, there are going to be some math and science courses. And don't be afraid of that. Even if that's not your strong suit, you know, as long as you get a general handle of it, you don't need to be the top student in those areas. But let's say you want a little more insight before you pursue those science and math courses or before you really pursue an engineering career. Well, 
take advantage of the PennDOT job shadow program. What it essentially is, you either come in for a couple hours a day, uh, out of the day, or maybe you spend a full day shadowing a PennDOT employee. In, in this example that I'm talking about, it would be uh, an engineer, but it could be any career area in PennDOT where you're going to uh, follow that employee around for the day to see what they do. So this could be a nice way to figure out, hey, do I want to start going off to vote tech for a particular trade area? Or do I want to start gearing my high school education to more science and math courses to pursuing an, an, an engineering degree? So take advantage of these job shadows that we have. And like I said, you get in touch with me, you let me know what career area you're interested in, and then we'll, we'll see what we can do to set up a job shadow. Like I said, whether it's for a couple hours out of the day or a full day, just to whet your appetite a little bit. And a job shadow, this is applicable whether you're in high school or college. And there's no limit. You're not just limited to one. If you do one while you're in high school, um, maybe you want to do one, you know, your junior year, your senior year, then while you're in college, that's fine if it helps you tailor your career path and your education path a little bit more. Um, I will say at the immediate moment, because of the restrictions in place with corona, these are on hold, but hopefully in the coming months as we get back to a new normal, uh, we will start activating these again. But even right now, if you're really interested in it, uh, get in touch with me and we'll work to keep you in mind for once we start reintroducing job shadows after we get back to our new normal with corona. Another thing to consider, uh, especially for any instructors or uh, coordinators on the presentation, we offer group tours of PennDOT facilities, whether it's our offices or our maintenance organizations. You could have a group of students come in. You could see that real-life work environment and interact with our staff and ask questions. And our staff, in a lot of cases, likes this because our staff members can really uh, stress what skills you should really be trying to develop while you're in high school or in any type of post high school education that you're going after all right now another thing for those of you who are underclassmen right now in high school meaning you've just completed anywhere from your freshman through your uh, junior year you are eligible for our step program and that stands for school to employment at PennDOT if you're in either a co-op program or diversified occupation program. So this especially uh, pertains to those of you who are going to a program in VOTEC, or maybe you're thinking of getting into VOTEC, or maybe your high school has some type of co-op program or diversified occupation program. This supplements it. You're eligible for it during your senior year, and you'll spend part of your school day at school, and then you might spend three to five days uh, per week for at least three hours a day, maybe more, coming to work either at a PennDOT office location or a PennDOT maintenance location. And this is in conjunction with your co-op program or your diversified occupation program to build up your skills in like what we like to say, a real world setting. So now you're putting those skills to work. Everything you learn in the classroom, you're now putting to work. And oh yeah, the other thing is you're getting paid. So all the hours you put in while you're at PennDOT, you're getting paid $12.50 per hour. That's a couple hours per week that you're working. But then any holiday weeks or those summer hours before school starts or all those um, summer hours when school ends all through June, you're able to work a full, uh, a full uh, work a week at that point. So you could really make some nice money at that time. So if you are interested in the STEP program, touch base with your co-op coordinator or get in touch with me ultimately it is your co-op coordinator or your guidance counselor who needs to apply to this program on your behalf okay uh, you'll come in for an interview and then we select students now once again right now for the upcoming school year this is uh, on hold until the corona situation uh calms down a little bit more but i would like to think we're going to get a late start on this for the 2021 school year but again if you are interested get in touch with me or definitely talk with either your guidance counselor or your co-op coordinator. Um, the other thing, if you're basically just looking to make some money, uh, if you're pursuing any type of post, uh, post high school education, consider our summer maintenance program. This actually consists of several positions there. 
Um, anyone could apply for the summer custodial worker position and the summer highway maintenance worker position. Um, we need those throughout the summer months, basically from April through October. Um, just think of the highways. We have all those medians where on the highways where the grass needs to be cut. We have a lot more people coming through the rest stop. We need to keep up on the maintenance of those uh, those uh, uh, rest stop areas. And then you see uh, the in the middle bullet section there, the college student summer worker position. Well, for those of you pursuing any type of post high school education, if you're enrolled in a traditional college, community college, a technical school, you're eligible for that college student summer worker position. Now, for the most part, it's not really going to supplement your uh, your your studies at school. It's more so just to make some money during the summer months. But you see, it's nearly fourteen dollars an hour. Um, you do need to be enrolled in college um, or any type of post high school uh, college institution to qualify for that. Now, again, right now because of Corona, this is on hold. But once we get back to a a new normal, I think this uh, program area is going to be reactivated. So again, a lot of opportunities here to make some money during the summer months or to increase your, uh, your exposure to different skills while you're building up your education. Um, another definite way to build up your experience um, as you're pursuing any type of post high school education is through our summer internship program. And this is available basically for anyone. You see, we have it broken down into engineering categories and non-engineering categories. As you heard me talk earlier, we always, always, always have a high need for engineering interns. So those of you um, who are planning to pursue an engineering degree or you're thinking you might want to get into this, we're always looking for engineering interns during the summer. And again, this is a way not only to get some real life exposure at a workplace, but it also is going to help you make some connections at PennDOT. So once you graduate, it might be easier to get your foot in the door for full-time employment. Now, let's say you're planning to pursue another career area outside of engineering. You simply fall under the non-engineering uh, category. And that could be anything from accounting to communications to finance and administrative. You saw early on, we talked about all those other career areas. So we use interns across the board uh, once you're in your post high school education. Um, a tip I want you to keep in mind, we start posting for internships right after Thanksgiving. So the sweet spot to start applying for internships is the period right after Thanksgiving through February. Go to our website listed at the bottom, pen.gov slash jobs, and there's an internship section. That's where you could see after Thanksgiving what internships we're going to have, as well as internships that are available in other state agencies. And again, Internships are a nice way to make some connections. So once you're ready for full-time employment, um, you know how PennDOT or another state agency operates, you might have a little bit of an increased opportunity to gain some employment. And again, the other thing is all of our internships with state government are paid. And again, as a former communications journalism major, that's a nice benefit because I did two internships. They were great for the experience, but they were also unpaid, okay? Um, this is probably the most important screen. I know it's not maybe the no, most fascinating screen, but this is where all the opportunities are and all the information is. And in our remaining minutes here, um, I want to stress that uh, take advantage of the websites that are out there, not just with uh, uh, PennDOT and the Pennsylvania State Government, but any other employer. Um, you know, back when I was your age, the internet was just coming into being. We didn't have all these resources at this time. So if you want to really learn what an employer is all about, drill down on that employer's website. Get into it to see all the different opportunities that are on there. Remember how I stumbled upon that human resources management trainee program? If it wasn't for the website, I would have never learned that position. And right now, Corona, you still might have some more time on your hands. So dive into both of these websites and take a screenshot of this website if you're able to or with your camera. Please take a pic of this. Hold on to these websites and check in with them regularly. See the different opportunities that are on there. And that second website there, when you want to apply for open positions, whether it's with PennDOT or any other state government uh, uh, agency, 
that's the website that you're going to go to. And even from our wor- first website there, um, uh, that PennDOT has, we're going to link you over to that other website. But that's how you uh, uh, get in and apply for positions with state government. Now, another thing that Annalisa asked me to do uh, when we were setting up this presentation, she said, Doug, you know, any tips that you can make our students aware of, please pass them along. And Here's one important tip that I want to stress, especially in this day and age with technology. And right now, with the pandemic, with everyone working from home, we're learning about you know uh, using uh, all the different technology and the apps to communicate remotely from home. And the other thing that goes along with this is um, sometimes brevity with technology. You know, just having some brief brief information, short, sweet, and to the point. And generally, that's a good thing. But I want to stress this. When you're applying for a position, especially with state government or even another employer, don't be so brief that you're selling yourself short. Uh, When we're reviewing job applications with the state, we need to see that you qualify and that you have enough experience, whether it's through your education or through previous employment that you held. So if you're just giving one or two word answers on the questions, or if your resume just has very brief nuggets of information, that might not be enough for us to determine that you qualify and you know we're, we're not going to qualify for you for the position and you're not going to have a chance to interview so make sure with technology if you're doing things from your phone that you're still providing enough information to demonstrate that you qualify for a position the other thing that i cannot stress enough don't just use a general or generic resume every time you apply for a position, whether it's with state government or any other employer. What I wanna ultimately encourage you to do, every time you apply for a position, tailor that resume information, tailor your application so it is geared for the position you're applying for. Make it make sense. Don't apply for an administrative officer position with a resume that's geared for a snowplow operator position. Make sure it makes sense for the position that you're applying for. And remember right now, yeah, the economy's a little bit tough right now because of Corona. So there's a lot more job seekers out there applying for a limited number of positions. If an employer gets a poorly constructed resume or a very generic resume, they're gonna say, this person's not taking it seriously. So put that resume and application information together seriously. What am I ultimately saying? It might take a couple hours to put that together. And I know with technology right now, we're used to everything being quick and fast, but when you're applying for jobs, sometimes it might take an hour or two, maybe three, but this is the way you're gonna sell yourself This is the way you're also going to show that you qualify for that position. So get out of the habit, if if you've done it already, of just using a general resume. Every time you submit your resume, adjust it. You don't have to start over from scratch, but adjust it so you show that you're meeting the qualifications for that position and that you're actually demonstrating your interest for that position. That's really important. One final point here um, that I want to stress is when you go to employment.pa.gov, you're going to set up an account. So I know I just read a lot that you need to tailor your resume information every time you apply. The other side of that is you're going to set up your account. You don't need to start over from scratch either. All your core information is going to be saved in there. And also the nice thing for all the state positions you might apply for, every time you apply, every application is saved there. So if you need to go back and say, well, what did I use when I applied for the administrative officer position? Or what did I use when I applied for the equipment equipment operator position? You could go back and pull that information out because you set up that account. So again, once you get comfortable with these websites, you're going to learn how to use them so that you can move a little more quickly. A couple quick other slides here. When you get to the main part of our employment website, you can see that yellow arrow. That's how you set up your account or look for open jobs. The red arrow on the middle left, that's how you look at internship opportunities. There are some internship opportunities posted right now. Um, Let's say you're interested in that technical assistant position I talked about earlier, which is only posted for a couple of months out of the year. But that's where maybe you decided you don't want an office-oriented job. You want to be out in the field, out in the road, um, doing uh, some hands-on work. You could sign up for a job alert. So when that technical assistant position is posted, you're going to be notified via, via text or an email. And final slide here, if you have questions down the road, 
here's how you can get in touch with me. Shoot me an email, give me a buzz, especially if you or any instructors out there have questions on the STEP program or job shadows. If you have questions on the internships or the college summer worker position, you can get in touch with my coworker. That would be Dan Shifka. I'm gonna leave the screen up for a couple minutes. And again, those two websites, please make sure you either have taken a screenshot at this point, you've taken a picture with your phone, hold on to those websites and regularly check in with them. And the other thing um, to get back to Annalise's point about other tips, I know right now you're seeing the headlines with Corona and you're hearing how the economy right now has contracted. It's a lot tougher to find jobs. And I will even tell you, even state government, we've gone into a hiring freeze right now. But remember how I also gave that example. The supermarkets were still open. Uh, customers needed to drive to the supermarkets. Tractor trailers needed to drive to, the, to make deliveries to the supermarkets. So even though state government has a general hiring freeze, we still need to hire for essential positions. So get your skills. You could even go on the website now, see what we're hiring for. It's just whether you're looking at state government or another employer, there's going to be fewer positions out there, but there still are positions, but you just need to sell, sell yourself more. So again, do not use a generic resume. You don't need to start over from scratch, but tailor your resume and application information to each position that you are applying for. Everyone, I really appreciate your time. Drill down on those websites, see everything that we have to offer, whether it's in the next couple of days you get in touch with me with some questions or a couple months down the road or a year or two down the road. Get in touch with us. We'll address any questions that you have down the road. And Annalise, I'll jump over to you now to see if you or anyone else has any questions that we might want to touch base on right now. Great. Thank you so much, Doug. Um, I do not have any questions. Emily, Lindsay, have you gotten any? I have no questions, but the presentation was really great. Thank you so much, Doug. This was fantastic information. Yeah, no, no problem. No problem. All right. Well, hi, this is Wendy okay, Scazzelli. So I have a question. Sure. Um, so you could probably answer it now. I could probably get a hold of you later. It's in regards to a couple of the youth that I have who graduated from York Tech. Um, they were in the diesel mechanic okay. program. Um, they were not able mm -hmm. to get die certification, um, and they can't, they have their permit for their CDL, but they haven't been able to do the CDL testing. Um, we're not sure when that is going to be done, um, be held. So a question was, if they were looking for work right now, what type of um, position could they apply for through PennDOT? Well, um, that one we did have, like I said, it, it, you, the ones you want to keep an eye on the lookout for would be the, um, equi uh, let me, before I mess up the title here, let me pull up my notes here. One second, I'm going to fix the right screen. Um, it's going to be, hold, um, I'm getting back to it one second, and then I'm going to bring it up on the screen here. But they could keep an eye out for that to see when they're posted, because we have several equipment operator um, uh, trainee positions. Let me get you the formal job title name here. One second, and I'm going to bring the screen up for you. And then you can email me, and I'll give you a little bit more specific information um, to tailor it to it. But I think you said you're from York County, correct? Yes, I am. OK. That's another important point, especially when we're in um, a little bit of a, a, a tough time right now um, with the economy. So if you're in York County and you know you could travel around a little bit, I always encourage not just students, but even adult job seekers, make a geographic circle. Can you consider positions in Adams County, Lancaster County, Dauphin County, and the nice thing with state government, as I said before, once you get the foot in the once you get your foot in the door, there's internal postings that only current employees could bid on, and you can then work your way back to a your county based position. Now, back to your question, the specific title is transportation equipment operator trainee. That's where um, if you um, have your CDL permit. We, in a lot of cases, will work with you in terms of additional training to help you pass that CDL test. So again, 
The job title uh, is the Transportation Equipment Operator Trainee. I don't know that York County, uh, the York County PennDOT facility has any openings right now, but that position comes up often enough in a lot of the counties throughout the state. So maybe it won't come up right now in your county, but maybe Adams or Lancaster County. And if you see it come up in a nearby county, especially because you know employment's a little tight right now, go after it and apply if it's in a neighboring county. Any yeah. other questions? And if it, for and definitely, you know, email me or give me a call, and and we could go over that in more detail. Then, um, and, and I could provide you some more details, um, with that. But good question. Any other questions? We'll give a few minutes, but I'm going to bring up the screen. There's that job title. Uh, basically, under highway maintenance, there, there's that trainee position. And and uh, just a quick follow up to your question as well. If there's no transportation equipment operator trainee positions in the York County area or the neighboring counties, another job title to be on the lookout for that would be similar to that would be the technical assistant position. That's listed right above it. The technical assistant position, again, it just has a high school uh, graduation requirement. And again, you're going to uh, um, operate a lot of different pieces of equipment. And when they see you do have your CDL uh, permit, that could open a few more doors for you. So the technical assistant, and there's another job title to follow up to your question to be on the lookout for. All right. Thank you. Sure. And I did go ahead and put the link to the This is PennDOT video in the chat box. For those of you who want to take a look, please um, save that link. Um, I haven't gotten any other questions. If you do have any questions, please type them to the um, organizers now before we, um, while we still have Doug. And um, I will put our contact information for the different counties in the chat box as well. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or if you'd like more information about services available to you, please reach out. Um, like I said, I'm putting that in the chat box now. And um, Doug did send me over a PennDOT general career options document. Um, so I can send that out to whoever might want those. Um, we just need your email address. So if you want to type that to one of the organizers, we can make sure we get that to you. Um, and putting the contact information now. And then lastly, our next session um, is this coming Tuesday, June 2nd at 11 a.m. with the CEO of the South Central PA chapter of the Independent Electrical Contractors. And information for accessing that section is being distributed by our team, so you should be seeing that soon. Um, and I suppose last call for questions here. All right, well, if you do have any questions, like I said, you can um, get in contact with some of your program staff or you can reach out right to Doug. He was kind enough to provide his um, information there. Um, Doug, do you have anything else? Nope, I appreciate the opportunity. And for those of you who are seeking employment right now, again, I know the economy is a little challenging, but um, the final point I'll leave you with is, as, as you saw, I've been with the state now nearly 19 years, and we've had other big dips in the economy right after September 11th, after the economic downturn of 2008, 2009. Did things get tough? Yes, I'm not gonna kid you, but, we came through it, and the biggest thing I want to encourage everyone, even in a tough economy, keep looking. Sometimes you keep searching and make full use of the internet, you will eventually find something. You might have to roll up your sleeves, work a little harder, but there's always something to find. And even as we saw in the current pandemic situation, which we're still in, yes, some employers are hurting, but there's also some new opportunities. So even in a bad situation, there's always going to be a new opportunity out there. So use the internet to find what those new opportunities are. So everyone, I really thank you for your time. And you know, any point down the road, you have any questions, sometimes it's a little complicated looking at the different state positions, never hesitate to get in touch and we'll help you out with your questions on uh, employment with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And a big thank you to uh, Annalisa for setting this up. She coordinated all the details. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Annalisa. Thank you, Doug. That was a wonderful presentation.